Consider the arithmetic problem 3 times 5 plus 4 in parentheses. This problem can be represented by dots. These dots represent this arithmetic problem because there are three instances of 5 plus 4. Now the parentheses indicate that the 5 and the 4 have to be added first. Therefore, we combine the 5 and the 4 to show that the expression is equivalent to 3 times 9. Now, let's put the dots back and look at arranging them in a different way. Uh, we could take care of the 5s and the 4s separately. This shows us that 3 times parenthesis 5 plus 4 is the same as 3 times 5 plus 3 times 4. This rewriting of the expression is called distributing multiplication over addition. Now when I distribute multiplication over addition in algebra class, I'll usually draw some lines on the board to indicate what I'm doing. Let me show you how that's done. First I distribute the 3 to the 5, and then I distribute the 3 to the 4. Students sometimes ask, why bother distributing multiplication over addition? It seems easier to just add the numbers first. In the example 3 times 5 plus 4, if you distribute the 3 to the 5 to get 15, and distribute the 3 to the 4, you get 12, and then you add them to get 27, that seems like it takes more work than adding the 5 and 4 to get 9, and then multiplying to get 27. So why bother distributing? Well, one reason to distribute multiplication over addition is that sometimes the terms in the parentheses aren't similar. For example, 3 times x plus 4. The only way to simplify this expression is to distribute the 3 to the x to get 3x, and then distribute the 3 to the 4 to get 12. This expression, 3x plus 12, is now fully simplified. A word of caution, though. Don't make the common mistake of distributing multiplication over multiplication. You can only distribute multiplication over addition. 3 times 5 times 4 is not the same as 3 times 5 times 3 times 4. You should pause the video and think about that. Make sure you understand what's wrong with that scenario. Now we've used dots to illustrate the simplest case of distributing multiplication over addition, but remember that you could have arbitrarily complex examples by including more terms or more factors. Here's an example where we put another term in, in the first factor, 2 plus 3 times 5 plus 4. Here's one way to represent this with dots. First two instances of 5 plus 4, and then three instances of 5 plus 4. Now, if I distribute by grouping the 2 plus 3, it might look like this. First I distribute the 2 plus 3 to the 5, to get 2 plus 3 times 5, and then I distribute the 2 plus 3 to the 4, to get 2 plus 3 times 4. This procedure, if represented in dots, this procedure amounts to separating all of the 5s from all of the 4s. Uh, notice, by the way, that there's more distributing to do. So there's another distributing step, and in the end there will be four separate groups. 2 times 5 is 10. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 4 is 8. And 3 times 4 equals 12. Do you understand why there are exactly four terms here? This example is a special case of the more general problem a plus b times c plus d. To simplify this, you distribute a times c equals ac, a times d equals ad, b times c equals bc, and b times d equals bd. You might remember this process uh, when it was referred to as foiling. FOIL stands for firsts, outsides, insides, and lasts. However, you probably won't hear me saying the word FOIL very much this year, because FOILing is only one example of distributing multiplication over addition. For a different example, consider a plus b plus c plus d times e plus f plus g. If we distribute, we get 
AE plus AF plus AG plus BE plus BF plus BG plus CE plus CF plus CG plus DE plus DF plus DG. Now you should be able to look at this expression and, and understand the pattern. If you think about it, you could color code each of these 12 terms. Try to think for yourself which terms would be coded as red, which terms would you color green, and which terms would you color light blue, and which terms would you color dark blue. Pause the video and think about that for a minute. All right, we've inserted more terms. Now we'll insert another factor to make it even more complicated. A plus B plus C plus D times E plus F plus G times H plus I plus J plus K. If we did all of the distributing here, we'd get a very large expression. Now you probably won't have to do anything this tedious, but again, you should be able to read this expression and understand the pattern. Some students are confused when there is subtraction involved instead of addition. For example, a minus b times c minus d. But the key to simplifying when there's subtraction involved is to remember that subtraction is the same thing as addition. Subtracting is just like adding the opposite. If you're not used to thinking in this way, then you might want to practice rewriting this expression by adding the opposites. a plus negative b times c plus negative d. Then you distribute in the usual way. a times c, a times negative d, negative b times c, and negative b times negative d. Now in this last expression, notice that in the second and the fourth terms, the multiplication operator, the dot, is mandatory. Usually that dot is optional. All right, the next step is to multiply each term to get ac plus negative ad plus negative bc plus bd. And then as a final step, rewrite it so that instead of adding the opposites, you are subtracting again. ac minus ad minus bc plus bd. This might seem like a lot of steps, but with a little practice, you should be able to skip all of these steps. All right, now it's time to try to practice some of these on your own.